distraction day. <laughs> well, the first one too, but um, a lot of things happen in the mind. Often day two, unless you've been doing this for four months. But <laughs> and so it's really uh, it's really good to touch base on how does it work? How does the mind work? And day two is a good time to explore that a little bit further. Because as you've noticed so far, uh, for those of you who have been practicing other practices before in the past, like I've practiced, uh, I was a uh, Goenka student for five years. I also practiced Paok Sayadaw, so it's very Visuddhimagga oriented. So I know all these practices, one-pointed uh, absorption, concentration, uh, and all these. And you've probably noticed that what we practice here with the six R's and the Metta Bhavana is a bit different, right? It's like uh, sometimes at the beginning it looks like the mind is just open and there's nothing, you know. There's no control over the hindrances, they just come and go and... I remember my first time uh, doing my first online retreat with, um, in the, this particular tradition, uh, Bhante Vimala Ramsey and uh, uh, Twim. I couldn't believe, I was just, I thought my mind was a real mess because I was so used to pointing my mind to a single point and then shutting out all the distractions and for me that was peaceful. And when I started to shift lanes, then I really didn't feel that comfortable. <laughs> I was like, what, what is this? What am I supposed to be doing? What am I doing? Like, I'm not meditating. <laughs> so tonight, we'll try to explore a little bit more about that. <laughs> These two different kinds of samadhis are, um, have different qualities to them. So that's why every morning uh, we read uh, this sequence, Tassime Pancha Nivarini Pahine Sa Attani Samanupasato Pamo Jang Jayati, is because this is how the Buddha taught how the mind becomes collected, how it becomes samadhi. And this happens through a process of gladdening the mind, re releasing the distractions, relaxing and then the mind is uplifted and cultivating wholesome states like mitta sad, sad. so in this particular practice we develop a base of wholesome states and this is like our foundation but it takes a little bit of time that's the that's the thing it's a it's not as direct as just putting your attention let's say on this microphone and I can, like yesterday, uh, Venerable Metananda's exercise, you know, that's actually, um, that's a way to really um, concentrate the mind very quick. And then because of the force of the concentration, the hindrances and the distractions kind of like move out of our awareness, basically. But when we stop forcing this, and this is what I call the forced type of samadhi, a forced type of uh, mental stability or collectedness. When, as soon as we remove the force, then the hindrances come back rushing big time. And it takes a lot of effort and energy to maintain that kind of awareness throughout, uh, throughout the meditation, but also uh, not to mention our daily lives. But the practice which we've started here today takes a little bit more time because it is based on panya. It is based on discerning which states will bring the mind into collectedness, samadhi, and which states will move it away. A mind that is angry is like this. It's not, <laughs> it's not still, it's not clear. But it's not by forcing the mind to be still and clear that it becomes like that. It's because we develop the causes and conditions that support such kind of awareness. 
uh, in my in my quest to understanding the Buddha Vajana um, for myself, it was mainly for my own practice that I started translating, uh, going back to the Pali, the original Pali, because there was a, a lot of things that I could notice that uh, didn't really work. Like I didn't I didn't understand when I was reading the suttas, the way that I was told to practice didn't really work with what I was reading in the suttas. Like, uh, I was being told to uh, not remain attached to the joy, <laughs> which is something you've probably heard before. And then I'm, I'm reading the Buddha himself, and he's talking about piti and sukha and, and all these beautiful things. And I'm like, hmm, who's experiencing that? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm mostly experiencing pain, 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 and then I'm being told you have to stay equanimous, and then I would, I would stay equanimous, but then I would read the suttas and it didn't make sense, I, I, it was like I was missing most of it, I, was, I couldn't relate, I was like that's not how I'm practicing, this is not, like it doesn't match my experience. And then it took a long time and I, I started learning Pali and then started translating the suttas for myself, trying to find the meaning, and then this is when I stumble upon this sequence here, uh, which is also seen in the Mahanama Sutta and the Uposatta Sutta, the advice to Visaka, uh, the advice to Mahanama. The, it was an advice that the Buddha gave very, very often, probably the most often, to lay practitioners who wanted to practice at home and uplift their minds into remembering it's very close to the spiritual friend, actually. Uh, when you think about it the proper way, uh, remembering the Buddha, its good qualities, the Dhamma and the Sangha, which all kind of come together. And if your spiritual friend happens to be uh, any of those, that's great. It's uh, exactly what we're practicing, basically. And then there's also other recollections like the Chaga Nusati, the, the remembering the devas, also the good qualities of the devas, the good qualities of, uh, well, our, our own generosity, our own uh, virtues also. Sila Nusati, yes. And then there's also by abandoning the hindrances that this sequence comes up. And so this is quite, uh, this is quite important to to understand, and this is where we find this Sukhino Chittang Samadhyati. And nowhere else in my, in my researches, nowhere else I could really find the place where the Buddha said, this is how the mind gets collected. It was nowhere else you could find, like I was looking for, you know, because uh, I was practicing uh, Anapanasati like this here, which actually I was trying to look for the word nostrils, and I couldn't find it. I mean, uh, it, was, it was just not there. The word nasika is not in the suttas. It's not in the part of the instructions. So, and then, and then further, like trying to really find, uh, really the, the closest word you can find is parimukha, basically. Yes, parimukha is the closest. That's kind of like being the channel that's being used to say, yeah, you have to look at here, you know. But actually, that... Parimukha doesn't really mean nostril tips. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so that, it was a really interesting journey, but it took me a long time. It took me many years to kind of figure out uh, and then finding this sequence and realizing even though, because the thing is when you read the suttas with the overlaying uh, of the commentaries over it, it um, it's hard to understand in the right way, basically. And that's what I did for a long time. I would refer to the suttas and read them with the commentary understanding, basically. Uh, and a lot of people, for example, like if you tell a monk, uh, oh yeah, this sequence in the Samanya Palla Sutta, they'll say, oh, this is just like uh, the bliss of the renunciate life, the bliss of being a monk, you know, this is all just only monks can, can, can feel that, but it's not true. It's just the way that the mind works. These are the seven supports of awakening. These are the Sata Sambojangas right here. Um, 
and then I was led to find deeper uh, discoveries in like the um, the eleven benefits of the of loving kindness metani uh, sangsa sutta, which one of them is tuvatang chittang samadhiyati, huh? And this is the only place in the whole canon where you can find the Buddha saying, this is the way that the mind gets quickly samadhi, quickly collected. Nowhere else in the suttas does it talk about in, the, in these specific words, not, not even anapanasati, not even... So metta is, according to the Buddha, the fastest way to get your mind collected. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Good, you, yes. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So, so it takes a little bit more time in this, in this method, but it is done through wisdom and it will stay also for much longer afterwards. It will follow you in your whole life. You know, so the, what you practice here and now, because you understand how the mind works properly, then you will understand how your mind works all the time. And so it will be a lot easier to maintain a certain level of samadhi throughout your, your whole life because it's not going to be forced, it's going to be understood properly. And so we, we just have to make it clear. We just have to talk about it a little bit more. We have to understand really how it works, you know, the six R's. It's really normal. We have to kind of talk about it over and over again because it has to, uh, the technique has to be kind of uh, learned at first, a little bit like uh, you, you learn anything, but then it becomes more integrated. It becomes more like a second nature. And slowly you will see, you will start to pick it up. And as uh, mental energy and uplifting the mind picks up, then you'll see that how it all happens together. At the beginning, we need a little bit of faith, a little bit of sadha, and then we just, we're good. <laughs> so we understand now how the mind gets collected, but also what brings the mind out of collectedness is also really important for us to understand because this is how we, lo we lose basically uh, the, the collectedness of mind. And a really good sutta to explain this is the Sabha Sava Sutta. So this is the Madhjama Nikaya number two. And uh, this is what we will be exploring tonight. So basically in this sutta in particular, the Buddha explains all these ways that these distractions, we basically, we create them, we bring them up just because certain areas of our lives, we either need to understand it in a particular way or not uh, refrain from doing certain things and develop other things, then avoid other things. So all of this is really important because then this is how you know, the mind will remain unified, basically. So it's not about, uh, here again is an Nixon Sutta to, to prove this. It's, there's nothing that says, you know, you have to just stick your mind onto one, one single point and that's it, you know. <laughs> you don't have to do anything else. No, it's, it's so much more than this. There is all of these things, all of these ways that the mind is, and that word, asava, is a really interesting word because also, well, it is translated in many different ways, but the translation that I like personally to use is because asava comes from the root shru, right? And shru means to, to flow. And now there's a scholarly debate, is it flowing out or is it flowing in? Because ah, we, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> It could be either or, because there are instances in the canon where it can mean both. Uh, but personally, I like to see it not as taints, not as, you know, uh, corruptions of the mind, but as the mind that flows outside to all of these things that 
it wants to either uh, it wants something or it flows towards um, uh, a memory or the past or it flows towards uh, difficulties like pushing away or like n not something that we haven't released yet we haven't uh, made peace with uh, that can also be uh, one of the the flows of the mind and I really liked uh, my, uh, my teacher Bhantevi Malaramsi's interpretation of the, the word asava just to make it a lot more accessible for us in our practice is just a distraction. There's all of these ways that the mind can get distracted, basically. So it makes it very applicable here and now, sanditiko. He takes it out of the realm of just philosophy and uh, we can actually use it in our practice here and now. And, and that word comes back over and over in the suttas. So it's really, um, it's really important to understand what that is. So to understand all of these ways that the mind flows out, then we can actually, we are empowered to stop that, to release and relax we smile and bring metta again, uh, but also to understand how the mind works gradually more and more. Uh, of course, we will be talking about paticca samuppada in uh, later in, in this retreat. This is like a really soft introduction, I would say. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> all of the all of the ways that how did the mind get condition to be in a certain way, to act in a certain way uh, over uh, the course of repetition and also doing all of these things that allow the mind to kind of just like be distracted all the time. And so as we explore this we will also uh, receive this really precious knowledge about how to preserve this water of samadhi that you know, we, we take so long to gather and to pool and to preserve that, not to just throw it away. <laughs> so it starts and the Buddha says, Monks, I will teach you the complete mastery of all distractions. Sabba sava sangwaram pariyaya. Bhikkave. Dese sami. Something like that. <laughs> Good, <laughs> good, I like it. This is useful. <laughs> Listen carefully and apply your mind to what I will say. Yes, Bhante, the monks replied, the awakened one said this. The calming of the mental distractions is for one who is aware and discerning, not for one who is not aware and not discerning. Not being aware and discerning of what? When there is wise attention and when there is unwise attention. So what is wise attention and what is unwise attention here? Kusala, yes. Yoniso manasikara, is that? Yes, uh -huh. yes. And ayoniso manasikara. So what are we doing with our minds? Now see here the Buddha doesn't talk about focusing. Oh, that's another word I was looking for uh, in the suttas, focusing. Not there. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so he's just talking about when there is uh, skillful attention and unskillful attention, basically. Uh, that is when the mind is wholesome, when the mind is unwholesome, directed to wholesome states, directed to unwholesome states. Being unwise with one's attention, new distractions come to be, and old distractions increase. And being wise with one's attention, new distractions do not come to be, and old distractions are given up. Monks, there are distractions that should be given up by discernment. There are distractions that should be given up by self-mastery. Or I'll explain the poly after, or maybe we can have the, the actual... Sure, go. There are distractions that should be given up by discernment. 
distractions that should be given up by self-mastery. This is also called restraint. There are distractions that should be given up by reflection, some by endurance, some by avoiding, and some by release, some by development. So there's not just one way that these distractions arise uh, and we, the way that we can give them up is there are many things that we need to look into uh, for a complete makeover of the mind. <laughs> So would you like to go through that sequence in no, Pali? And so the first one, given up by discernment, and this is dasana. Dasana is also very close to ditti. Ditti is wise understanding, right view. And a lot of distractions can be very quickly and very efficiently abandoned just by understanding things properly. And this is what the Buddha says here. Here, a person does not learn the Dhamma of the awakened people. So he would often start, even before wise understanding, before Samma Ditti, he would talk about Kalyana Mitatta, which is the way that we get this knowledge, the way that we uh, understand things properly is by visiting those, those people. And he would often um, compare the people who uh, do not know anything about the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, and then the people who have come upon this path. And so this is a, a very good example of it. A person does not learn the Dhamma of the awakened people, the Ariya Puggalas, does not visit the awakened people, does not know nor practices the Dhamma of the awakened people. A person does not visit the people of truth or Sapurisa. That's, that's that word here. Does not know nor practices the Dhamma of the, the people of truth. I, sometimes it's translated as true people, but that's kind of tricky for, <laughs> for the English crowd. So um, that person is not likely to understand what things are proper for attention and what things are improper for attention. Therefore, unknowingly, one attends to things improper for attention and one does not attend to things that are proper for attention. So basically, feeding the distractions, that release step, when we say not feeding it that distraction, not feeding it your attention, that's exactly what the Buddha is talking about here. So releasing that distraction, not feeding your awareness into it. And basically, just to skim over this, because this can be quite tedious, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of repetition here. And uh, I like to just skim over the surface of this, this portion. Uh, basically, he's just saying that when we put our minds to these distractions, we feed them and then they grow. Whether it's wanting things outside, wanting chocolate, or thinking about a person you don't like, <laughs> it's the same thing. It's going to agitate the mind and then it's going to go into that. And the more we feed those, then the more the mind becomes agitated. That's how it works. And when you release, you do not keep your attention on it, the second R, then, then the mind is released from that. It's not complete yet. We'll see in the development part uh, how it all works. But uh, for now, this is what it it means in regards to all distractions, basically all hindrances, whether it's wanting something, not wanting something, just the mind being agitated, and we'll keep it there for now. <laughs> We're just reading. <laughs> So what it is up to you. 
तुम्ही मूर्ख असाल तर तुम्ही काय करायचंय नेहमी जे करत आलं तेच करा नसेल तर आता आपल्याला जसं बुद्धाने सांगितलंय कि कोण असं करत कोण मूर्खासारखं करत तर त्यांनी कधी धम्मच ऐकला नाही तो असं करेलच जो कधी धम्माच्या संपर्कातच आला नाही तो असंच करेल म्हणून मी धम्म देतो मग असं होता का माने की तुम्ही सांगितलंच नाही आम्ही कसं करणार बरोबर आहे म्हणून बुद्ध म्हणतात की जो धम्म न पजाना बरोबर ना दोज पीपल विल डू दिस पण जर धम्म पजाना ही बरोबर आहे तर ते काय करणार जसं सांगितलं तसं तो दिस इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट आणि मग म्हणून ते म्हणतात की कशाला धम्म म्हणायचा तो सुद्धा आपल्याला काय झालं पाहिजे व्हॉट इज द ट्रुथ रियालिटी दॅट अ रिझन समाधी योग्य काय अयोग्य काय हे कळण्याची क्षमता कशाने येते पहिने बरोबर आहे म्हणजे पहिल्यांदा आपल्याला कळलं पाहिजे की आपण काय करतोय ते जर कळलं तर मग आपण करू शकतो अदरवाईज अंधारात चालल्यासारखं आहे ओके मिळून सुद्धा चुकीचं करताय तर मग तुम्ही अकोविद यू हॅव टू डेव्हलप युअर ओन पहिया अँड देन वॉक राईट यू कॅन यु नो शो यू द पाथ बट वॉकिंग इज तुमच्या हातात आहे राईट गुड हा कोवी दो ओके I just really like to emphasize that the Buddha first starts by dasana and then he explains samma ditti the first thing he explains is the difference between wholesome states and unwholesome states like right from the beginning it's that clear that's the most important thing when you understand what states are wholesome what states are unwholesome then you understand a lot of the dhamma and then he goes a, a little bit further into uh the general kind of uh right view basically which can uh bring about a lot of mental proliferation if it's not understood properly papancha <laughs> I think there's the Marathi also, huh? Yes. Prapancha. Prapancha. Yeah, you were saying that. Yes. Wow. Marathi. <laughs> That's the only word that I know. <laughs> Marathi Prapancha. <laughs> It goes on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then one unwisely attends in this way. Did I exist for a long time? Did I not exist for a long time? why did i exist all this time for what reason did i exist in the past having become what how have i existed in the past will i exist in the future will i not exist in the future how will i exist in the future for what reason will i exist in the future having become what how will i exist in the future <laughs> and one is perplexed regarding one's own present self now am i am i not yes. why am i what am i where has this being come from where will it go to one who attends unwisely six views or similar opinions take hold the belief there is a self for me arises as undeniable truth the belief there isn't a self for me arises as undeniable truth the belief self is the witness of self arises as undeniable truth the belief no self is witness of no self arises as undeniable truth the belief no self is the witness of self arises as undeniable truth or else the belief I am the self who speaks and feels who is continually experiencing the result of good and bad actions and thus myself is permanent 
steady, eternal, of unchanging nature, and it will stand continually in eternity. <laughs> so, <laughs> monks, I say, this is running after dogma, thickening the dogma, a wilderness of dogma, the distortion of dogma, a flutter of dogma, the shackles of dogma. Bonded by the shackles of blind beliefs, monks, that person is not liberated from rebirth, aging, death, sorrow, depression, difficulties, anxiety, and uneasiness. Or basically just distractions all the time, basically. <laughs> I say that this person is not liberated from trouble. Uh, I find this really uh, interesting because I, I, I was studying uh, yoga and Vedanta a little bit and uh, this is really, uh, uh, how is it called, uh, Satchitananda. Satchitananda, <laughs> yes. Like this eternal consciousness bliss. And in, in Buddhism we talk about Dukkha, <laughs> um, anicca dukkha anatta. <laughs> but when we understand it properly, it actually brings a lot of relief and joy and liberation, and the mind is freed from all these distractions. Whereas, uh, when when we believe in these any of these views, uh, I mean in Pali and in English, translating that is slightly tricky, but um, there is so much mental proliferations that are just let go of when we understand this properly. And we might not, it takes a while for us to experience that directly with our minds, basically the anicca dukkha anatta. But um, when we just place faith in that, at least uh, it really is effective also at cooling the mind. And uh, I, I remember personally just, you know, having my mind just like philosophizing about all these topics for uh, for time immemorial. <laughs> so, please go. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, we're trying our best. <laughs> yes, the word of the Yes, yes. Oh, we do. Yes, yes. If you go into Mitchell, what happens? Yeah. Well, yes, <laughs> very good. I, I, I really like this, uh, this combination. Yeah, this it's great. Meeting, yeah. Yes, it's great. It's great to have the poly there. Uh, yeah, it's very clear. We, I mean, this is what the Dhamma Desana is about, is to share this wisdom so that we can integrate it, take it in, and then we can practice properly. I mean, for me, it was such a, such a big difference when I was looking, so I, I wasn't satisfied with my practice. I thought that there's something wrong because well, obviously I'm reading the suttas and it, it's not matching my experience. And uh, finally understanding it, I, and then I realized I could have practiced in the wrong way for a really long time, you know? And I met a lot of people that have been practicing for like 30 years, 40 years in the, same, uh, in the same way that I was practicing. And I thought, huh, like they never like realized like something is wrong here, like something, there's something off. But anyways, and so we're so lucky to have this knowledge here because, I mean, for me, it took me years to find people that could explain this to me. Uh, and I, yeah, and I, I found it um, uh, in a lucky strike, basically. So, uh, now we've seen Mitcha Ditti, and now we're going to go into Samma Ditti. So, that was a, the negative bit. Now we're getting a little bit more positive. <laughs> so, what to do? Here, a wise meditator, the Arya Savaka visits the awakened people, learns and understands and practices the Dhamma of the awakened people, visits the people of truth, understands and practices the Dhamma from the people of truth, 
comes for a 10 day retreat at Sonawane Aranme in <laughs> Mumbai area, organized by the Pali Department <laughs> of University. That person is likely to understand what things are proper for attention and what things are, impro <laughs> are improper for attention. Therefore, knowingly, one attends to things proper for attention and knowingly, one does not attend to things improper for attention. So that's, again, putting emphasis on that release step. No? Not, not putting your attention where it doesn't need to be, where it's going to just get distracted. How does one not attend to things? Okay, so this is basically the same thing. Uh, not attending to the things that create distractions, which uh, in this particular case is um, Kama Chanda and, and then so basically anything that is a distraction, not putting your attention on it and anything that is a wholesome state like the joy, Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upekka, the four Satipatthanas, the Sattva, Sambhojangas, all of that, putting your attention into that, investing your in attention into that. Thus, not attending to things improper for attention and attending to the things proper for attention. New distractions do not come to be and old distractions fade away. So in the Samma Ditti, we saw all of the things that we could think about. About this is me, this is who I am, this is uh, how was I in the past, how will I be in the, in the, in the future, who am I, where this is this being coming from. And now the Buddha really cuts it clean and says, so this is the way you should think. <laughs> One wisely attends to things knowing this is tension, dukkha. Like just knowing to recognize. And uh, does that sound familiar? Where, where would the step would be in, in what we're practicing? Would it be like the first step maybe the recognize good sub TK okay good so this is the first step to recognize mine is gone and what is what comes with the distraction tension and tension is is it pleasant no, <laughs> it's not. So when we learn to see, see that Buddhism is not about dukkha, it's about recognizing dukkha and letting it go. So basically that's the first step and this is what we do every time we recognize and now there is tension and then we can let it go. One wisely attends to things knowing this is the cause of tension and that's the distraction. So that's why I keep putting so much emphasis on the distractions bring tension. Distractions bring tension. Uh, so this is tension, this is dukkha, and this is dukkha samudaya. Recognize. <laughs> 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 because they are not able to take that like, you know. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> the is distracted, not able to take that like. Yes. They go around in that proliferation. Yes, yes. Prapancha. Ah, yes. Prapancha madhya adatta, ek vicharala, kalas vadhoja ka, kalas prapancha manta. Kaunsar vadhoja ka kya vicharala. Kaunsar vadhoja ka kalas prapancha manta. To thamvai cha alagets. That's okay. It will come. <laughs> it always does. <laughs> or almost good so that's why I put so much emphasis on uh, recognizing the tension with the distraction huh? so these two things the samudaya the dukkha and dukkha samudaya they come together and the dukkha samudaya is the distraction and the dukkha is well dukkha tension so, one wisely attends to things knowing this is the release or the end of tension, dukkha nirodha. 
One wisely attends to things knowing this is the way or the path leading to the release of tension. So what would be the path? There's six of them. <laughs> six hours, yes, very good. Uh, yes, very good. Yeah. Yes, good. Because when we're practicing the six R's, we are practicing the Eightfold Path. Ariyo atangi komago. And then we are also practicing the Satta Sambo Jangha. We're also practicing the Chattari Ariya Satchani. So we're practicing the whole path in six R's. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't work in Pali, the R's, but it's okay. <laughs> so the Buddha didn't come up with it, but I'm sure he would. <laughs> so I think that was one of the most important uh, realization or understanding that I came upon onto my own path was to uh, finally find a practice that I felt like, oh, right, I am practicing the Four Noble Truths now, and I understand what I'm doing in relation to that. So that was a, a huge, a huge change. And then, as we learn to see everything, all of our mental states, um, as what brings us tension, what causes it, as we learn to release that, and its source and develop that path, then three things happen. Three fetters fade away. The belief in the personal self, and that would be Sakkaya Ditti. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And then doubt. Very good. Vichikicca. And adherence to blind practices and observances or rites and rituals. Sila Bhatta Paramasa. Yes, very good. Good students. They're, they've learned very well. Okay. Three on three on this one. Okay, next. <laughs> this is how distractions are given up by discernment. So as we and see, it's, it's a wonderful uh, sutta where we see that the Buddha explains how all the ways that we can believe what we are, ourselves, and all these things. And then he says, when you practice properly with right view, then that sakkaya ditti is just abandoned. You know, this, it's too much proliferation. <laughs> no self, no problem. <laughs> so very clear mind, happy, uplifted. Doesn't it's the mind that doesn't take things personal. It's the mind that is always uplifted, is always smiling. You you can notice right away when your smile is gone. Right away you can feel the mind is like this. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. So oh, I oh, oh. And it's thinking, 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 thinking. And then, and then you can see the smile is gone. And that's taking itself very seriously. And that's, that's, that's exactly what the Buddha is talking about here. But it's, this is simply talking about like a tangible way we can talk about it in our own practice day to day. Okay, because we're changing uh, now. We're moving into Sangwara, the self-mastery or restraint. How are distractions given up by self-mastery? And this is the um, guarding of the sense faculties. Reflecting wisely, one practices guarded by the mastery of the seeing faculty, the eye door. Because of one, be, because if one were to practice unguarded by the restraint of the seeing faculty, this would bring up tension and overwhelming distractions in one's mind. And this, if I'm not mistaken, is Vigata Parilaha. 
उपजेयों आसवा विघात परिलाला परिलाह and that was another thing that I was looking for in the suttas was where is the tension? Where is that word, you know, that we can actually feel in our bodies that is actually manifesting in our bodies. And th this is probably the closest we can find. Vighata and parilaha. Ha. <laughs> parilaha. Parilaha. Ah, this time, see? Um, and uh, when, when, once we know this, it's... Uh, it's really helpful because it really shows us that yes, these distractions have an impact on our body. This is like also called fever sometimes or... Therefore, one practices guarded by the mastery of the seeing faculty. So that means, and this is why I was saying that this is a very soft introduction to dependent origination, paticca samuppada because we're talking about here what 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 chain uh, what link of dependent origination would that be here the six senses salayatana salayatana yes very good huh? very good yes and so upon this passa Pasa Pachaya Vedana. Oh, and Vedana Pachaya Tanha. Okay, and this is where all of our concepts, opinions, judgments, ideas, proliferation start rolling in. When we see something, oh, I really like this uh, gravel. And then it makes me think of my driveway, and then I think of my my car, and then I think of my my house and my family, and and then I put labels on everything, and then I start really diving into that. And see, this is this is what happens basically when we don't guard our sense doors, basically. And this is how distractions will arise mostly, most of the time. And of course, this can happen at the eye, at the ear, at the nose, at the tongue, when you're eating, uh, when you're smelling, uh, whatever it is, whether it's like really nice, I don't know, uh, incense or whether it's cow dung. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, navigating all of these, uh, the sounds, some, some people uh, would hear like lovely music, uh, maybe from the village they want to go check it out, or maybe it's just traffic, oh, I don't like traffic. You know, so it's either or. It's always, you know, oh, I really like to s hear that music in that village. And then, or s some people are more prone to anger and will be like swearing at the traffic, for example. So, and then we also have uh, the food when, when we taste it, when we, uh, when, when we eat. And so it's all a matter of not, that doesn't, ma that doesn't mean like shutting away what we're experiencing, but just releasing and relaxing the opinion, judgment, the idea, the preferences, all of that, and just living with what is. Yata bhutang jnana dasanam. Yes. Very good. Good students. <laughs> In this way, when one practices unguarded by self-mastery or restraint or sangwara, Tension and overwhelming distractions come to be. But when one practices guarded by self-mastery, tension and overwhelming distractions do not come to be. So it's that simple. Who knows? Who knows what will happen? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> yes. 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 The wrong station will come. The Tathagata <laughs> is the one who shows the way. Yes. But they cannot walk for you. <laughs> show sure, it can show you the way to Rajgaha. But <laughs> this is uh, Venerable's Sutta. <laughs> so, by reflection, given up by reflection, how are distractions given up by reflection? 
while wearing robes. And this is relative to the four requisites, basically uh, food, shelter, clothing, and medicine. These are the basic, most basic things that we need for us to practice comfortably uh, without overindulging into too much, too many things, but having a comfortable practice here and now. Uh, this is mainly uh, towards monks, but uh, in, in all of life in general also, this is really applicable uh, for, for, those of, for those of you who wish to uh, experience the Dhamma uh, to a, a deeper level perhaps, or uh, to, to get closer to the, the Buddha's uh, teaching, living a simple life and uh, being very satisfied with only these four things which are robes for covering the body, alms food to satisfy the stomach, basically, to just keep the body alive. Uh, I'm not going to read through the whole thing because I, I think we're stretching it. <laughs> and the other ones are uh, quite uh, good. But um, mainly this, is, this revolves around uh, only taking what we need to have a comfortable practice here and now. And so this plays a major role also in uh, preventing distractions from arising uh, for, for no real good reason, basically. So when we, uh, for example, uh, as a monk, you, you just, uh, we have a, a pharmacy, basically the, um, the Gilanhala. We call it the Gilanhala. Yeah. And so that we, we just go take our medicines or whatever. If, if we're sick, uh, that's where we go. Uh, but then, you know, it happens that <laughs> there's just not what you want. <laughs> and then you, you're like, oh, well, I'll just practice contentment. <laughs> but um, it's, it's funny that sometimes instead of, um, you know, overreacting or uh, you, you can simply just be like, huh, okay, well, that's just not there, and uh, be content anyways. Or uh, just having a robe that, uh, I don't know, uh, for me, I, uh, I was uh, back in Canada by myself as a forest monk, and uh, I <laughs> it, was, uh, it was winter, and it was snowing, and it was quite cold, so I was going for a pindapat, and... Um, uh, people told me uh, they were trying to get me Gore-Tex robes, actually, <laughs> like like waterproof robes. <laughs> uh, and I was like, you know, like that's a, that's okay. Um, and to basically, um, it just I had enough to keep my body warm, and um, that was okay. That was enough. And you know, I'm 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 from that place, and usually you you wear like nice jackets and all that but uh it worked anyways and it was fine and i would come back and i would be really drenched and wet but uh it would dry and i had other robes and so i could kind of so uh and life is very simple when we live it in that way and so it keeps our minds very uh very stable very very pleasantly uh, uh balanced how are distractions given up by endurance? Now, yes, yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, it also gives us something uh, real and tangible to come back to. So whenever you have, you know, more than than this, and you're not really attached because you know that you really you only need these four things, and if you have that, you're you're good. So you can. You know, all the other things, they, they come and they go. And it, it, when you're not attached to that, then, then you're okay. Your mind is free. Uh, there will be times when you have more and then we, there will be times when you have less. And so if you're always expecting only just what you need or, you know, keeping it simple, then you're always going to be happy, basically. That's what it means. How are distractions given up by endurance? Reflecting wisely, one patiently bears with heat and cold, 
hunger and thirst, flies, mosquitoes, wind, sun, insects and lurking animals, ways of speech that are hurtful and unwelcomed, and experienced bodily feelings that are painful, sharp, burning, severe, disagreeable, repulsive, and life-threatening. One is forbearing in nature. In this way, when one is not forbearing, tension and overwhelming distractions would come to be. But when one is forbearing, tension and overwhelming distractions do not come to be. So this is, of course, there's a limit to this. We're not saying, you know, like plant needles in your legs and be like, try to not move or anything. It's uh, really about there's a certain limit where a threshold where you know oh I can't meditate it's too hot or I can't meditate it's too cold or I can't meditate there's flies or I can't meditate there's well there's no flies that wouldn't work but <laughs> I think we all enjoy the no flies um, somebody said something to you and then you, you can't like it's always there in your mind it's just this slightly, you know, knowing where to put a little bit more effort. Sometimes it, it depends on the personality types. That, that's one thing that I notice is that, you know, some personality types might really, like, actually might put too much energy and do this too much, actually. And then this brings up tension. But then uh, there's also personality types that, uh, hmm... Sorry? Yes, yes. Or uh, maybe a delicately nurtured, I guess. <laughs> How would that, would that be uh, the word that we use? Delicate disposition. Delicate disposition, yes. <laughs> Just uh, on the complaining side. <laughs> yeah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> So, you know, they're, sorry? Yes, but they are trying to tell what you say. She declared all of us lazy. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. No, no, they're not going to be shy. And now there are some distractions that can be simply given up by avoiding some things. <laughs> very, very uh, straightforward. Reflecting wisely just as someone would avoid a mad elephant. Makes sense. A mad horse, a mad bull, a mad dog, a, sh a snake, a stump, a, a thorny bush, a hole a steep cliff, a cesspool, a sewage spill. Similarly, one avoids an unsuitable seat. This is more for monks, <laughs> just, so, just so you know. <laughs> it's like, hmm, well, <laughs> an elephant or a seat. <laughs> it's like, what's, I don't understand. <laughs> So it's basically uh, Vinaya rules, and we're, we really want to keep good Vinaya usually, so um, good conduct, so an unsuitable se seat like a big lazy boy or something like, like that, we're just going to try to avoid because we're going to feel guilty that we broke a rule. That's what is meant here. An unsuitable location like going, hunting the streets at night, for monks, <laughs> is not recommended against Vinaya. Associating with those people bent on harm and any action wise brothers and sisters in the spiritual life would recognize as harmful behavior. Therefore, reflecting wisely, one avoids these things. In this way, when one avoids these things, there are no distractions, and when uh, there, there are no distractions, and then if one were not to avoid these things, distractions would come up. 
or like uh, I like to say, just don't stand in the middle of a busy street or things like that, you know, like there are things that you can do that are really obvious that you can avoid, like stand in the sun for like five hours. I don't, I don't know if you can do that. I don't, I don't think I could, <laughs> but I'd get really, really hurt. <laughs> So yeah, just these things that obviously will cause a lot of problems in your mind. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> good. <laughs> Were you at? Basic, basic, very basic, not the word, word to word. Yes, yes. Are, were you at Vinodana? Yeah. Or were you at uh, the one before that? No, no, no. I am talking of the Parivajana Pahatvasava. Ah, okay, Parivajana. Okay, good, Avoiding. good. So now Avoiding. we're going to Vinodana. Yes. Now okay, we're going to good. Vinodana. Okay, release. Yes. Okay, that this is how I I am translating this. But yes. uh, how are distractions given up by release? And this is what step? <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> Don't worry, we have more hours. <laughs> for all the four next hours <laughs> reflecting wisely when a thought of um, sensory engagement or outward desires wanting something outside comes up one does not continue along with it one abandons it releases it lets it go and one undoes it and brings it to an end so this is what I talked about last night, basically. Uh, this is where I'm taking this from. It uh, goes through um, wanting something, then not wanting something, or anger, or dislike, and then uh, harm, and then any other harmful, unwholesome state that come up. One does not continue along with them. And these are the distractions. One abandons them, releases them, lets them go, and undoes them, and brings them to an end. And how does one do that? By not keeping your attention, by not keeping your attention on the distraction, just letting it be there on its own. It might stay there for a little bit, but it's okay. You, you, just, you stop feeding it your attention. So when one does not release, tension and distractions arise, and when somebody releases, then they fade away. So now the last one. How are distractions given up by development? And this is a big part of what we do. So now we had release. First, we had all of these ways we could understand how to understand things so that distractions do not arise and how to avoid cer certain things, how to guard the sense faculties. And now we had release uh, when, when thoughts come up that are unwholesome or distracting, release them. And then how to bring it to full fruition, basically, uh, by development bhavana reflecting wisely and this is talking about the satta sambhojanga the seven supports of awakening one develops the support of awakening of awareness which is caused by letting go calming down releasing and that culminates into relaxing or surrender depending on how one wants to look at it this is uh, Viveka nisittang, viraga nisittang, niroda nisittang, vosaga parinami. So this is actually a sequence that comes up very, very often in the suttas. When the Buddha explains the seven, uh, the sattva sambhojangas or the ariyatangikomago, he will sometimes explain it. That is like each of the each of the qualities that are rooted in these qualities. So viveka, like letting go, detaching. Viraga, which 
can be in interpreted as dispassion, but personally I like to understand viraga as calming down. Huh? Viraga, like becoming unagitated. And then niroda, which is you know, another way of saying releasing or bringing something to an end, bringing like calming it down, yes, yes, until it stops. And then Vosaga Parinaming is a really uh, interesting, interesting uh, uh, end to this formula, which uh, Vosaga actually can mean literally, yeah, either surrender or like in the dictionary, even relaxation. So it's quite, it's quite, uh, quite wonderful and clear that uh, this includes also the relaxed step. And so we're, we're completing the whole uh, circle here. And then it goes basically through Dhamma Vichaya, Virya, Piti, Pasadi, Samadhi, Upekka, which is Viveka Nisittang, Viraga Nisittang, Niroda Nisittang, Vusaga Parinami. So th that is based upon letting go, calming down, releasing it, bringing it to an end, calming it, and that culminates into uh, relaxation or surrender, giving it up, basically. <coughs> and obviously, uh, this whole sequence, as we do this, these four qualities, Viveka, Viraga, Niroda, and uh, Vusaga, as these mature, then uh, these seven supports of awakening also will mature. And so that the joy will arise, that pamoja will arise, piti will arise. And so in this way, we are cultivating, uh, we are cultivating wholesome states and letting go of unwholesome ones, the distractions. And just so you know, the metta, the maitri, is found, uh, well, actually, that's a good question. Where, where would you think, where would you think to find the metta in, in the seventh, in the Sattva Sambhojanga? Pasadi, I yes, it culminates. Yes, that's very close, very close. But um, PT would kind of like uh, meta would bring PT. But what what we do that it's like uh, meta is like the choice we're choosing this, and it's it's kind of like an investigation. Dhamma vichaya, yes, yes. So dhamma, dhamma vichaya is like right effort, basically. Uh, dhamma vichaya is literally another word for for samavayamo, uh, for right effort. And as we do right effort continuously, virya, then there is piti, piti arising. So, and then the body calms down, and then and then the mind gets collected and then steady. So this is how it works. Um, I thought, I think we might wrap it up here. Is that, is that good? I, I was going to add another thing, but I think it's going to take a little too much. The ending is good. <laughs> Monks, when one has given up the distractions to be given up by discernment, the distractions to be given up by self-mastery, by reflection, endurance, avoiding, release, and development. One is called a monk or a meditator who lives protected by the mastery of all distractions, sabba sabha, who has cut away tension, flung off the shackles, perfectly gone beyond conceit, who has made an end of trouble. This is what the awakened one said, glad at heart the monks rejoiced in the awakened one's words. So automatically we are doing all these things when we do one thing. Yes. 
exactly. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> so, but when you're practicing the six R's properly, then you need dasana, you need samaditi, you need to understand how mental states work. That's just, that's just, there's no other choice. Otherwise, you'd not really understand the six R's. But when you use the six R's properly, you have right view, you have, you're practicing properly. Then you uh, practice all of this, basically guarding the sense faculties, you understand uh, things the way that they should be, and then you're likely to avoid things that uh, have to be avoided, release things that need to be released, and develop the things that need to be developed. So uh, as you go back to your spiritual friend, the metta, and uh, releasing and relaxing everything else, basically. And this sutta is not uh, an odd sutta. It actually is found, again, in the Anguttara Nikaya. I think it's the book of six. In the book of sixes. And um, it's found in the Majjhima Nikaya. And it's found broken apart in little bits and pieces throughout the canon. So it's quite... Uh, it's quite a guarantee that, uh, I mean, as far as, as we can have a guarantee on these things, um, that the Buddha actually really taught this quite a bit, uh, this, this uh, mastery of all distractions, basically. So this is what we're all doing here, and now hopefully we have more wisdom and Govida. Yeah. <laughs> and happiness and kushi and uh, kushi and muskurana and um, what's the other one I forgot the other one I learned in Jidvan <laughs> kushi muskurana hasna hasna yes hasna hasna muskurana kushi enjoy karo <laughs> okay, okay, TK. So we can maybe, are you gonna say something else? No. Okay. Okay. Flying in the air tomorrow. <laughs> Good. Yes. 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 Yeah. Ako video. What? What can we do? <laughs> Very good. Okay. Maybe now let's uh, share some merits. Punya um, numodana. Page two thirteen. 
And I, I think I will be uh, saying it first, and then you can repeat after me every line, basically. Dukkha patta chani dukkha. Dukkha patta chani dukkha. Bhaya patta chani bhaya. Soka patta chani soka. Hon tu sabbe pi pani no. Idang no punyang sabbe satta no Sabba sampati siddhya. Aka satta cha bhumatta Deva naga mahiddikha Punyam thang anumoditva Chirang rakhantu buddhasa sasanam Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu have a beautiful evening, have fun, and I'll see you tomorrow in the interviews with a smile. Sila samadhi patitit chitinto Isahitui hepitana